any any comments from the victim? All right. Everybody here with a helicopter operation. Okay. Just make a. Uh, uh, he asked us to explain. They they actually had real world events going on, and he said that there was a question about timing. And I think he may have told us the range as well. They they came and got a call to go to a real world incident in Walton County. They came and called back the second time to Walton County, and they actually left and and was going to another event. So he has to explain that. Uh, he comments that he wants to have to we'll get back to the ranch. Is it all right, Randy? They get you. Yeah. Any comments? Just get up to Randy, and, and we'll get them back to the airport. Okay. Sure. Appreciate them taking taking part in this. I mean, it always adds a, you know another sense of realism to it. Uh, very quick in, very professional. Uh, Doc Elias is the medical director for them. That whole that whole outfit. They do a tremendous job around the state for us. Uh, real good asset to have up here. Okay, uh, we'll sort of wind down here a little bit. A couple other areas we want to cover real quick. Uh, Doc and Olivia Hospital, what went on up there? We, we, none of us saw any of that. Did all that go okay? Yeah, no, the, the hospital was, was very well prepared. Uh, you know, for being a small facility, um, I think they could really handle uh, something of, the, of this caliber. Uh, basically, when they got the word from the scene, uh, that this had happened, they, uh, their administration started having discussions. Uh, they've got a significant labor pool within the hospital, uh, bringing nurses down from the upper floors you know, to the emergency department. Uh, they have uh, mechanisms to bring in other positions. Uh, they had the emergency department as essentially the red area. Uh, the yellow was uh, kind of the OR PACU. Uh, they had a morgue area set up, and they also had a green area. So uh, the patients arrived to the hospital. They were secondary triage. Um, they seem to handle the flow well. Um, you know, they seem to uh, uh, have a lot of thought in terms of uh, they have the ability to uh, lock down the facility. They, they incorporated their maintenance personnel uh, as security guards. So, you know, the front gates, uh, you know, so to speak, would be closed and everybody would have to enter through the emergency department. Uh, they had areas uh, set aside for patient families. Uh, they had uh, a PIO person established. So, so they really had a lot of thought put into this whole process. Um, and then I kind of asked them about, you know, transport thereafter. They think that, that, that becomes a problem. We, I think they could manage a patient to do the initial stabilization, but I think that that is an issue when red and, and kind of critical patients do show up at a facility like this where ultimately they're not going to be able to uh, be managed by a trauma uh, physician. So, so there probably a lot of these patients would have to get transported out uh, they end up having five or six reds, uh, and they would have mechanisms. Apparently, their administration uh, does have uh, uh, MOUs and such with the, the various other facilities. Apparently, the referral patterns are pretty well established. Um, I think it, there would be a problem with, again, some of the transport assets. It sounds like they do utilize you guys uh, for routine transports, uh, but if you're going to be all tied up with the scene, your ability to get back to them to transport somebody from there to Bay could come in question. There could be some, some issues of just asset limitability. Uh, again, I think that's where you also go back to all the air assets. Uh, you're fortunate to have all these uh, aircraft, that helipad there is large. You can accommodate the Blackhawk with the mass team. Uh, so I think ultimately, at large scale, uh, MCI would be able to be you know, handled at that facility. All right, winding down now, uh, we got our a couple of friends from the media here with us today and whatnot. We would be inundated if something uh, happened. Roger, any comments on the PIO? PIO? We talked about yesterday when we were going through the final uh, walkthrough of the setting up the next size. We needed the media today that came to cover for the, for the reporting purposes to be able to, to, to uh, have a place to we only had one when they decided again, we placed them up on the hill above the entrance and, and talked to her later. She said that was an excellent place because not only could she see the, uh, the the accident, she also had a pretty good focus of the events of going into the building, not like inside the building, but going into the building. In real world, in real time, I think we would want to move uh, farther away. We would probably go down to the, to the middle school with the entrance here, or we'd come up the hill if it was there or something. Uh, media is, is excellent. Freedom of press is a wonderful thing, but uh, they, they could add to the uh, they could add to the confusion if they were allowed to get too close to the action was, what it was, cutting somebody out or 
certain law enforcement was made insecure and wouldn't let them back. But I think that that, that happened. The new appreciation wasn't come and reporting and things like that, but for PIO. Uh, and I think another thing that we talked about in the planning that I that I didn't see but would have liked to have seen better, not a criticism, just like to have seen. We did instant command, but I'm not sure that we ever got around to unified command. We had instant command and then did a wonderful job, but he mostly uh, we were calling dispatch, law enforcement was calling dispatch. We didn't have law enforcement, EMS, fire, and everybody coming back in Randy's vehicle, and one person would be. Some of those things we made could have made one transmission, but we might have made two or three. So, unified command, I'm not sure we did that as well as I would like to have seen it, but, but I think we did a good job. Everybody did a good job in their respective roles. Good, good, good. Very good point on that. You want, you want me to address Ian while I'm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think, I think what we were looking for this is not an EM exercise as much as it was uh, uh, the mass casualty and the, and, and the other things. But one thing about EM is if we don't have, and our area coordinator here, he may want to say something, we don't have manpower, we don't have personal power. If we have an event, whether it's something like this, we would be involved on the edge. If you call the EOC for something, we'd hit you. But these are the same people that helped us in fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, derailments, whatever it is. So uh, again, our our role today, you and those today, was we had some money for exercise and training. Uh, the one thing that we might not have done, I just talked to Connie at the office. We got two calls at the EOC. Uh, we got one that said uh, the exercise has started. And then we got one from dispatch that said, would you please call the state warning board and tell them that the exercise is over. So we didn't get any requests or any kind of things like that. EM's role, part of EM's role is to be a facilitator or a, or a hub that if you revolve around, if you don't have or, or mutual aid don't let you reach out to our adjacent counties, you get in touch with uh, EM, we perhaps could give you those state resources. And Sean, you may want to. If it's Sean, right. you got any comments? Uh, yeah. Area rep from Division of Emergency Management. Yeah, the drill went very, very well. We've, we've been to drills all over the state. Uh, it's really great to see everybody come out and uh, being a small community, being so tight-knit. And I, I applaud Roger because he took those funds and made them a county drill, not just emergency management. So everybody got to play. Everybody got to see what a real event is like. We've had these events being in a, a rural situation. We've had Bay recently. We've had incidents over in Walton. We've had incidents over at Homes, where we've had to evacuate schools, where we've had internal shootings, not at, at school, but at a school board meeting. So it's great to see this and great to see everybody come together. And uh, we applaud Roger for that. He's done a really good job for, uh, for Washington County. Great. Thank you.